Keep it real simple, keep it real simple. Bring everything right back to ground zero. Cause it all comes down to this love God and love people. Hey everybody, good morning and welcome to the Simple Church. We are so glad to have you here with us today. We want to say a big thank you to everybody who went down to the Do Good store and shopped at the grand reopening on July 4th. And now the Do Good store is back open every single weekend, so you have an opportunity to shop and do good. And don't forget, you can still shop online at dogoodstore.net. So once again, thanks for being here, and don't forget to stop by the Do Good store today to shop and do good. So we really hope you enjoyed the first week of our new series, Build a Dreams, and we have a great mission project that I'm gonna let our missions pastor, Robin, tell you all about. Thanks, Christy. We are excited about the Field of Dreams series, and we wanna invite you to let your baseball and softball equipment play extra innings. We are collecting new or gently used baseball and softball equipment to be given out globally, nationally, and locally to teams in need. Here's what you can do. Bring your new or gently used baseball bats, softball bats, gloves, baseballs, softballs, catcher's gear. A full list is right there on the screen for you to see. But bring that to the Do Good tent over the next two Sundays. Thanks so much for helping us and for doing good. We can't wait to create Field of Dreams for kids all around the world. All right, everybody, it's time to mark your calendars for Sunday, August 18th. It's Splash Kingdom Baptism. This is a great day of free family fun and baptism, and we want you to be a part of it. So if you would like to sign up to be baptized, you can go to our website at thesimplechurch.tv. Click on the events and sign up today. We really hope to see you there. It's a great time of free family fun, so don't miss out. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for being here today as we continue our new series, Field of Dreams. Hi, I'm Eddie. My name's Tommy, and we are the Skit Guys. And we're here to talk to you about Independence Day. Yeah, that's right. It was a dark time when the aliens invaded, but the president jumped up on that truck and said, we will not go quietly into the night. And we had our Independence Day. You were thinking of the movie. They made a movie. Why don't we talk about what the 4th of July is in a general sense? Sounds great. I will take point on that. You don't have to do that. 4th of July is a time of year when it's usually hot. That's it? It is hot. I mean, like, like seriously hot, unless, I mean, unless you live in Canada or something. All right, well, they don't have July 4th in Canada, just in America. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're saying that other countries' calendars go, like, from July 3rd to July 5th? No one's saying it isn't hot. I just think maybe we should give people a little more, you know, uh, a little more stuff. You know, like the important elements. So you want me to cover the periodic table? All right. I'll just feed you, okay? So the 4th of July celebrates our independence from... Our parents. No. Yes. No! I celebrate every year the day I got out of Mama's house. Okay. We celebrate our independence from Great Britain that we won after fighting the Revolutionary War, all right? In which we were led by General... Contractors, mm. which are much better than just a handyman. They just have a, a better general knowledge base of building. I'm gonna take a walk. Was it, was it General Motors? So Tommy, what do you think about when you think about the 4th of July? I'm just gonna try to help you. Just, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? 4th of July? Fireworks. Fireworks, yeah, good, good, fireworks. Okay. okay. Keep going, you think of fireworks. Yep, that's what I think of too. Okay. No, no, okay, well, I mean you, go ahead. Go. What else, what else do you think? Fireworks. Okay, okay, let's let's think of something besides the fireworks. Uh, 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 bottle rockets, mm -hmm. uh, screaming Mimi's, just, uh, M80s, uh, let's just try to get candles. Okay, all right, can we just please get off the fireworks? Are you even American? You want to know what the 4th of July is about? It's about freedom, but it's so much more than that. It's about opportunity. While we have the freedom to not agree with everyone on everything in this country, one thing we should all agree on is that we live in one of the most blessed countries in the world. This 4th of July, spend time celebrating the freedom you've been given. Celebrate the right you have and don't let it end there. Appreciate it all year round and be glad our forefathers signed the Declaration of Independence so, so many years ago. You are so smart. Well, thanks. Hey, God bless you.
that somebody sneezed. And God bless America. Did everyone sneeze? Oh, I need to go. Happy Fourth of July. Well, good morning, Civil Church. Hey, thank you for coming. Justin is on vacation this week, a much-deserved week of vacation. And so if you're here today, thank you for coming. Obviously, that was a dumb statement. If you're here today, you hear this, you're here. But if you're watching online, hey, listen, thanks for tuning in. Get off of Pinterest, Facebook, come here, hang out with us for about 30 more minutes, and then it'll be great. But we are continuing our series today called Field of Dreams, all about baseball and what it means. And last week, we had hot dogs for you guys. So you know what I said today? I told them, we were talking this past week, and I said, guys, we got to up our game just a little bit. Not only is it something that they get to eat, and, but then it's just gone. We got you a little something today that you, can, that you can take with you. What else says baseball more than a miniature baseball helmet with ice cream? Huh? How about that, guys? We got it out, guys. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. There we go, guys. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing says America like ice cream. There you go. Did I say it was bluebell ice cream as well? That takes it to the next level. All right. All right, as they're finishing it up, wrapping it up, we're going to get rolling. As I said, we are talking about Field of Dreams. It's all about baseball. I know last week, Justin had pictures of him in Little League baseball gear. And to be honest with you, I was an outstanding baseball player for one game in Little League. And it was all about that one deal. Um, I would have pictures, but... Um, it's been a while back, and no, it wasn't the one shot with a little gunpowder in the thing that blows up. It was actually a real live Polaroid camera. Anybody remember Polaroids? Thank you. Thank you, guys, very much. But here's the deal. Here's why I was an outstanding player for only one game, and it's all because of a guy named Blake Tucker. And Blake, if you're watching online, which I highly doubt this, I got you now, dude. I got you now. But, but Blake was a pitcher. And we went to school together, but he played on the other team. I was on one team, he was on the other team. And, and when I would get up to bat and he would pitch, it seemed like that ball was coming at about 100 miles an hour. And here was the thing, it wasn't coming across the plate. Most of the time it was coming either from my head or, or my leg. And, and a matter of fact, if, if I had on a pair of shorts today, first you would go, ah! But then, second, you would probably see if the lighting was just right, there may be like the seams of a baseball right here that you could just check it out and look at it. So baseball was never really like my big deal. I was, I was into other sports, but I am a fan. I'm going to go ahead and say that. I am a fan of baseball. And the cool thing about it is when I think about my own past with baseball and I look at the way some other guys play the game, I think, you know what? You're telling me I got a chance. Check out this video. Number 10, Brett Gardner of the Yankees, robbed in Cleveland. His slump extends to 0 for 18. Okay, I say this makes it 0 for 19, plus six stitches in his lip. Number 9, now here is a teammate. Never mind Jake Marisnik gacking the fly ball. Josh Reddick is a true friend. I got you covered, bro. This is way worse. Number 8. Chase it down, trying to get three, and ran out of his shoe in the process. <laughs> Had a flat tire, that's why he got thrown out. But take a look at his shoe, there it goes. It loses a little bit of traction. Number seven, Estella singles up quickly with it as Bader. Throw to the plate, they're not gonna get him. Wait, where's the other runner? Luis Renifo, laid low by invisible gopher. Happily, afterwards, Renhipo's teammate, Albert Pujols, could laugh about it because it didn't happen to him. Number six. Tapper over the mound. This is trouble. Peraza and Jeanette collide. The ball dribbles away and 
Everybody safe. Number five, the Diamondbacks probably would have let the guy in the Red Sox cap off with a warning, except he broke the stadium. And he nearly mooned the crowd. The roof is open, if you know what I mean. Number four, if you're in Texas and you're going to throw back Roberto Perez's home run ball, try not to hit the foul pole. Open it made a nice loud gong sound. Number three, Italy. One and one. Oh my goodness, the throwback hits Bellinger's helmet. And Cody kind of dropped his head a little bit to uh, get ready for the next pitch and put it right into it. Number two, bottom ten, Norfolk six, Scranton five. But Norfolk's right fielder Anderson Feliz thinks his team is tied, not winning, so he thinks the guy on second is the losing run, not the tying run, and that Ravik Valera's double has ended the game, so he throws the ball into the stands. Guess what? That has ended the game as Valera now circles the bases and Scranton wins 7-6. And number one, the Louisville Bats at the Memphis Redbirds. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me a gallon of mayonnaise. I don't care if it sets my arteries ablaze. Did he bring it from home? Do they sell it there in the ballpark? Is there a mayonnaise vendor? Dude, I had to keep mayonnaise guy in there. Because I know you're probably about on the third bite of your ice cream, and you're going, man, I need a little mayonnaise on this stuff, you know? But yeah, I, I feel pretty safe to a degree uh, about baseball when I see those guys. But also realize those guys are in the bigs, as they say. They're major league guys, and so they don't always look like that. Me, on the other hand, perhaps, we'll see. But we're going through, as I said, we're, we're doing a series called The Field of Dreams. And if you've never seen the movie, it's based on a movie. And uh, maybe you've seen the movie before, maybe you haven't seen the movie. But here's what I've got. I've got the trailer. I want you guys to check this out just to remind you what Field of Dreams is all about and what we're speaking this morning, as in how can we find our Field of Dreams. Check this video out. I have just created something totally illogical. That's what I like about. If you build it, he will come. If you build it, he will come. If you build what, who will come? You didn't say. I hate it when that happens. Me too. Who's your invoices? Ray is. <laughs> I think I know what if you build it, he will come means. Ooh, why do I not think this is such a good thing? Daddy, there's a man up there on your lawn. Are you a ghost? What do you think? You look real to me. Hi! You can see it. This is really interesting. You believed in the magic. It happened. Isn't that enough? Annie, it's more than that. I feel it as strongly as I've ever felt anything in my life. There's a reason. Go the distance. Did you hear the voice, too? Did you hear it? Go the distance. Yes. Our grave is dead. He died in 1972. Are you Moonlight Graham? No one's called me Moonlight Graham in 50 years. Unbelievable. It's more than that. It's perfect. You build a baseball field in the middle of nowhere, and you sit here and you stare at nothing. This field, this game, it's a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good. Hey, is this heaven? No. It's Iowa. <laughs> field of Dreams. It's, it's the movie about one man's effort to build a baseball field in order to pursue his dreams. And we all have dreams, and, and some of us have pursued those. Some of us maybe are living the dream right now. But I want to talk this morning for just a few minutes about what keeps us from those dreams. What keeps us from standing on our field of dreams? And usually it comes down to two phrases. The first phrase that keeps us from our dreams is this, what if? What if? It goes something like this. Well, what if I don't get that job? Or what if she says no? Or what if they find out about it? Or 
what if the, the, the market falls out and I lose everything? What if, what if, what if? And it creates this one thing called fear. It creates fear. And we've all lived with fear before. I mean, there is a, there is a, a healthy fear. I was, I was also informed by my wife, who is a mental health professional, therapist, counselor, or whatever you want to call her today, uh, on, this, on this stuff about fear. And it turns out this. We, did you know this? We are actually born with only two fears. It's the fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. That's it. When you're born, when you came into this world, you only had two fears, the fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. Now, there are healthy fears, and all these other fears that we have in our life, we've learned over time from, from when we were a child until wherever we are now as a, as a teenager, as a, as a college-age student, young adult, as an older adult. Whatever it is, we've learned those things. But, but there is healthy fears. It's that ability to look at a situation that we've been in before and go, you know what? I look at it. I know what that is. I see it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to avoid it. I'm going to do it differently this time or I'm going to do it this way. But sometimes you experience fear on, on a different level. And a few years back, we as a staff went to a conference out on the West Coast. And on the way, we made a stop off. And Matter of fact, during that time, I was actually able to experience both of my inborn, innate fears of loud noises and falling. Check out this video. They're the highest thrill rides in the United States, towering up to 1,100 feet in the sky. They're calling your name. It's time to face your fear. Conquer your nerves. Go where only the brave dare go. There's just one thing that might stop you. You forgot to bring extra underwear. Get your scream on with X-Scream. Catapult headfirst over the edge of the stratosphere tower and dangle weightlessly 109 stories in the air. Push it to the extreme with insanity. A daredevil spin 900 feet above the strip, looking straight down. Pull some G's like a Top Gun jet pilot on Big Shot. A gut-wrenching 4G. High-speed shot up past the top of the tower with a free fall back down toward the launch pad. Are you up for the challenge? Experience the highest, most extreme thrill rides in the United States only at the Stratosphere. Vegas without a net. Yeah, y'all feeling when I'm stepping in? Are you hearing me? I wish I had the picture of, of us on that road. We did the big shot, okay? And I mean, there's the whole part of that, if you've ever ridden anything like that or before, you understand there's this whole anticipation thing. Like they lock you in this deal that holds you in and, and you're sitting there kind of pushing on it and you start going through the what ifs. Like what if this thing really isn't locked in? What if this, doesn't, what if when they shoot me up, I just keep going? Those kind of things. And I, I wish I could have brought our picture. Uh, you know, they have the old cameras right there that take your picture when you, when you take off. And um, it was not a pleasant picture because it, there were actually four of us, on, as you saw in the picture, there were four of us on our side. Uh, it was Keith Rhodes, Perry, uh, my wife, me, and then Christy Rhodes, all kind of across. And, and they're, they're telling you, you know, prepare for liftoff. And you're going, what's the deal? And here's, guys. Let me just wrap this little story up real quick for you. There is a problem I have with being shot straight up in the air and looking down at jets flying in the air. So we're up here and there's jets going like this. And I'm going, this is not right. That's a healthy fear. What I want to talk about this morning is unhealthy fears. Those what if fears, the ones that we say, you know, what if this happens? We get paralyzed by those in our decision-making process. And we say, well, well, what if this happens? Or what if he says this? Or what if she says this? Or what if, that, or if my boss doesn't go for this? Or, and, we, and we are paralyzed by it. The good news is this. Jesus had a lot to say about fear. 
He had a lot to say about fear. And I love what Andy Stanley said when he talked about Jesus. He said this, if any person can predict their death, burial, and resurrection, and then pull it off, you better go with whatever they say. Okay? So here's the deal. Here's the deal this morning. Here's what Jesus says about fear. Are you ready? Here it is. Boom. Don't be afraid. All right. We good with that? You ready to go to page two? Yeah. I mean, because most of us sit here and go, what do you mean, don't be afraid? You just told me I've got this fear in my life. But Jesus spoke about that. He spoke a lot about fear. And what Jesus did was we need to understand when Jesus spoke, everything was connected. There was a purpose for everything that he said. At one point, Jesus, at one point, Jesus was sitting on a hillside and the people were all around him and he was talking to them and he talked about money and he said, look, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. In other words, what, what occupies your attention occupies your passion. And he talked about prayer. He talked about communicating with, with God. And he said it this way. He said, when you pray, how are you supposed to pray? You pray what? Our what? Our Father. That's right. Our Father who is in heaven. And he was saying, look, you can go to your Father with anything. And our, and our earthly fathers may have been a little bit lacking. Our earthly fathers may have been the worst. Our earthly fathers may have never even been around. But understand this. There is a heavenly Father who created you. He knows you and he loves you. And because of that, he says, I want you to come to me. And so Jesus was sitting on the hillside and he was going to teach them a lesson. And he said this. That's what he said. He said, that's why I tell you, don't worry about everyday life. Just don't, don't worry about it. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. In life, more than food and in your body, more than just clothing. Understand this. God does not panic. Your Savior does not panic. Your Heavenly Father does not panic. He, he doesn't sit back and go, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe they're going to do that. He doesn't do that. He said, look, I understand. I understand what. But we, but we look at the future. And we base it on what we've seen about ourselves, what we know about ourselves at that moment. And what do we do? We get afraid. We worry about it. Jesus went on. He said this, but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Man, that ought to comfort you. If you're dealing with fear this morning, if, you're, if there's a decision that you've got to make and you're just afraid to make it, you need to, you need to camp out on this verse for just a second. Your heavenly father already knows what your needs are. And if he already knows what your needs are, then can't we go with that? Can't we understand that? Because what he's saying is this, I am enough. I'm enough. Today, regardless of, of what your fears are, if there's a fear that's keeping you off of your field of dreams, understand, I'm enough. God says, I'm enough for you. What are your fears? Think about that. Second phrase that keeps us off our field of dreams is this word, if only. These few words, if only. Man, if only I'd have been born in a different family. If only I'd lived in a different part of town. If only I'd gone to a different school. If only I'd never gone on that spring break trip. If only I'd never been around that group of people. And we get we, we deal with all the emotions uh, of the if, if only. If only I'd kept my temper in this situation. And it leads to one word, and that word is guilt. Guilt. We begin to experience this thing called guilt, and it's like a weight around us. And you know this. I mean, you've experienced this yourself. I mean, think about that. Well, you've had something going on and it's crossed you up with another person and you, you've got this feeling of guilt that's weighing down on you. And then maybe finally you, you come to that person and y'all work it out. What do we say? Man, I feel like a weight's been lifted off of me. Because it's, it's this thing called guilt. And it throws us off balance. And as a result of that, we overcompensate. 
Maybe as a parent, we, we overparent because we knew what it was like from our own past. Or maybe we we're, we're, we're become too permissive. We, we just let, the, let them go and do whatever they want to because we know, you know what? My parents have had me on lockdown all the time. I'm not going to be that kind of a parent. Or maybe we, in our relationships, we get too aggressive or we become too, too lenient in what we do. And it's all about this thing. Our guilt follows us wherever we go. Kind of like this fly right around me. <laughs> but the reality of it is this. Our guilt does. I mean, it follows us wherever we go. I mean, we, we pick it up at work and we bring it home at the end of the day. We pick it up during our, our high school or college years and we carry it into the rest of our adult life. And all the time, we don't want to face it, but we can't deny it. We don't want to look at our, our guilt, but there's nothing that we can do about it. Because here's why. Because we can never unleave that person. We can never be un unfaithful. We can never undrink too much. We can never undo what put us in that position to begin with. And so we're left condemned. And our past is never designated to be left behind. Understand this. There is no witness protection plan for our past. There's no way we can take our past and say, okay, I'm going to take you and I'm sending you to this small town in western Wyoming and past, you're going to stay there the rest and I'm going on and living my life. We can't do that because our past is always with us. However, but there is a place, there is a place where we can live, a place where we can exist, where our past does not define us and where we don't have to deny our past. And a man named Paul talked about it. And we're getting ready to look at a verse of scripture that he wrote. But I don't want you to just think about it as just words on a page or a Bible verse. Oh, thanks. Good. See you later. I'm out of here. But I want you to understand. If anyone had regret in their life, it was Paul. Paul had more guilt in his life than you and I combined. He experienced guilt in an incredible way more than any person that, that I ever known or that you would ever know. When he steps into history, he's called Saul of Tarsus. And Saul had his job and he did it well. He was the best of the best. And here's what his job was. He was responsible for taking men and women and he would arrest them, he would torture them, he would imprison them, and he would even murder them, all in the name of God. And he did it, and he did it well. Matter of fact, he, he talked about himself and he said, I was, the, I was the chief, I was the head guy. And later in his life, Saul would have this encounter with Jesus and it, and it would change his life and he began to be known as Paul but later Paul would sit down in a room with the sons and daughters, the mothers and fathers, the cousins, the aunts, the uncles, the family members, the friends of those who he killed. Now think about that. He would sit in a room and he had to look in the eyes of the family members that he had killed. And Paul did not deny his past, but rather he wrote it down. And as he was talking to this group of believers, a group of God followers in Rome, he said this. He said, so there is now no condemnation. There is no condemnation. He said there's a place in our life where our past is neither forgotten or our past is neither shaping us. And he said 
There is no condemnation. And where's that place? He goes on and says this. There is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. So if you're experiencing that weight right now, if there's guilt in your life, and if you can put your finger on this event, if there's something that triggers you, that makes you feel that way, and you've got that weight, that's under, understand this. If you belong to Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. And Paul was able to sit down and he was able to write that. And he said, look, here's the reason there's no condemnation. He says, because when you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. And he goes on, he says this, the law of Moses, the law of Moses was unable to save us. Understand that, guys. Wrap your head around that for just a second. There is no civil law. There's no city law. There's no parish law. There's no state law. There's no federal law that's going to be able to save you. There's nothing that we can do. There's no law that says, okay, we're going to deal with this guilt. No, there, there's laws that say we're going to punish that guilt. But Paul said, understand this. What the law of Moses was unable to do because of the weakness of our sinful nature, he said, look what he said. He said, so God did what, he, what the law couldn't do. God stepped over and said, you know what? The law, it, it can't do this. And so he sent his own son in a body, like the bodies that we sinners have right now. He sent his own son in a body, the bodies that we sinners have. And he goes on and he says this. He continues on, and in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us. God said, you know what? I, I can handle your past. And I can put it in that place where it doesn't define you, but it reminds you of what I've done. And it will no longer have control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sin. So you got to deal with guilt. There's something that has to be done with guilt. And it either will define you or you'll either try to deny it. But, but Paul said, you know what? I've been there and I understand this. There's no condemnation. And what God did was he took care of that by sending his own son to die for you, and for you, and for you, and for me. So how do we get back on the field of dreams? How do we deal with the fear and the guilt? How do we deal with the if-onlys and the what-ifs? Let's go back to Jesus. This is what he said. It goes to this word first. First, Jesus said it this way. So the Gentiles, for the Gentiles eagerly seek, eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Again, your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So here's what he said. But you seek first, there's that word first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things are going to be provided for you. Are you worried about the what ifs? Seek first the kingdom of God. Everything else is going to come down. Are you worried about the if onlys? Are you going, man, Brian, you don't understand my, my life. Dude, there's no way. There's no way. Seek first the kingdom of God. And everything else will be added. The band's fixing to come up and sing a song. I want you to just listen to the words that come off out of this song and hear what God says to you. Pray with me. God, thank you. Thank you that you deal with our, our fears, you deal with our regrets, you deal with our guilt. And God, in all of that, you say that you love us. And all we've got to do is seek you first. And so God, I pray that we can understand that you are big enough, that you are enough, God. As a matter of fact, God, you are bigger than what we think. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen.
we're going to sing a song to our creator who knows us, understands us, and loves us. All of our doubts, all of our fears, we can lay them down to him. Sing along if you can. Listen to the words. We pray and praise our Father through this song. Speak to me when the silence steals my voice. You understand me. You understand me. Come to me in the valley of unknowns. You understand me. You understand me. You understand me, God. You understand me. So I throw all my cares before you. My doubts and fears don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought. So I stop all negotiations with the God of all creation. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought you were. rest there and leave it there in the Father's hands. Sing it, I will rest. I will rest in the Father's And leave it there at your feet.
Thanks. Thank you, Ben. Here's what we know, that we can rest in the Father's hands. And here's the other thing we know. We are not meant to do it alone. We were made for community and made to be connected. And so I just want you to be aware that if there's a question maybe that has popped up in your life or there's something going on and you know, you know what, I need to talk to somebody about that. I'd love for somebody just to pray with me about that. We do have in the lobby underneath the, the big, we call it the ski slope escalator, there's a care room. And there are people there that are, are there specifically just to, just to talk with you, specifically just to hear your story and pray for you. And so if you want to do that, just on your way out, just stop in there and say, hey, I need to talk to somebody. Or there's, there's even some cards there that you can take with you to help you make it through life this week. So I, I just want to encourage you guys to do that. And I, thank you for coming. Thank you again for just listening and being a part of who we are at the Simple Church. And it makes a big difference to us, trust me. And I want you all to go out this week, and I want you to have a great, outstanding week. And just enjoy the summertime and finding your field of dreams. All right? God bless you guys. Have a great day.